cool. Okay, welcome everybody. I've just opened the doors to our first webinar of the year. I'm just gonna wait a moment until everyone comes in. Got quite a number of you registered today, so thanks for doing that within Zoom. And then welcome also to those of you who may be watching on the YouTube channel. We are also live streaming on the Conservatory Canada TV YouTube channel simultaneously. And this is a first for me to try and attempt to do it. I think it's working. Uh, but thanks to the many of you who registered for the Zoom webinar. So, and I can see you coming into the room now. You'll have the ability to ask me questions as I go along today. Uh, we're no longer going to send out replay links as I was doing last year because all of the archives are just going to automatically appear on the YouTube channel. And I'll be editing those uh, just so that you can see them a little more easily. And that'll be available, you know, pretty much if only a few minutes at the conclusion of the webinar on the YouTube channel. So welcome. This is the first webinar of the new academic year 2022-23. For those watching distantly in the future at some point, this is September 9th, 2022. I'm Derek Auger, the Executive Director with Conservatory Canada, and welcome to Conservatory Canada TV, something I've been working on a lot over the summer to try and broaden our reach a little bit and, get, and make it much more interactive for you and to have all of the webinar replays and information all in one place, especially for new teachers. I think that's really important. So I hope your teaching has gotten off to a really good start this fall, and I'm sure I know a lot of you are probably teaching a little bit over the summer as well. Um, and this is also my teaching studio that I'm broadcasting from here. It's had a slight remodel lately, but I won't be welcoming students until next week. So I know a lot of you have jumped the gun a bit and gotten, gotten in on the action early. And I look forward to hearing about your experiences. Feel free to pose a question to me in the Q&A box or the chat box anytime. I'll try and monitor both of those as we go along. And I've got a bit of an agenda here today. I just thought today to start things off, I wanted to start off with something simple, provide you some information and updates on what we're doing at Conservatory Canada over the summer. And we've got a number of new things here that I know a lot of you are curious about, hence the audience. So agenda for today, I'm gonna to show you CCTV YouTube channel and show you how to navigate that. I find myself YouTube a little bit convoluted, but putting this whole channel together has been a lot of fun over the last couple of months. And I understand YouTube a lot better now having done that. And so I'll share what I've learned with you so that you know where to find our content. Our website, I'll talk about that a little bit. And then a big new piece for us, our new database, which we're hoping to launch in two weeks. I'm sure if you've gotten my emails, you understand that we've been in the process here for quite a while and are looking forward to launch that. The Associate Piano Diploma Syllabus, we've revised slightly, and I'll talk about that a little bit before we're done today. I'll take your questions anytime, and then I'll talk about upcoming webinars, including a great session we hope to have next Friday, or we are going to have next Friday, on the digital badge assessments. Okay, so starting off with CCTV, Conservatory Canada TV, I'm going to share my screen here. And here is a look at the YouTube channel that you will see. It's going to look just a tiny bit different from what I'm seeing because I'm actually logged into it right now on my end. But you can see here at the top, uh, it has the banner. You'll know you're in the right place. This is what it looks like. And then right underneath, you'll see CCTV YouTube channel content and there's live, there's a live box. If you ever come to the page and you haven't registered for the webinar um, for whatever reason, or you're watching it you know, partway through or something, you can check out the channel and just watch me live here. It's about a 20 second delay from what I understand. You just won't be able to ask questions there. You can leave comments if you want, but Jen, I won't be able to watch that at the same time as the Zoom interface. So anyone that has a question or, or, or a comment that they want answered live by me has to register for the webinar on Zoom so you get the link to join me here. And then the, all the replays will live here on CCTV's YouTube channel. Scrolling down a little bit, this is just the homepage of the channel. And what you will see generally is all of the uploads chronologically. And right now I've got a lot of content from last year uploaded here. If you've missed something specific last year you wanted to see again, this is the place to check it out. Not every last webinar is going to be posted here, but then over the next month I am going to post a few more. So chronologically you're going to see all of those there on the home page. You know, it's going to seem a little bit out of order, a little clunky to try and find things. You're going to see what's live now right underneath that. And that's what we're broadcasting today here in this moment. And then underneath that on the homepage, new teacher webinars. 
So it's great for new teachers. We wanted to find a way to hit them right away with, and, and I know a lot of you are newer teachers that want to know these things. You're going to see all the latest webinars for new teachers listed there. And then under that will be the archive, the archive of what we just did. So shortly, the live now is going to show up at the end of the webinar down below in a new section that's going to start to populate every week here as we broadcast these and simulcast them on YouTube. So that's the home view. You can also go to videos. This is the second tab here. I'm going to try and go slow so that everyone follows me. And in videos is just simply a chronological order of how I've uploaded them. They don't really make any sense because I'm uploading them sporadically here and there as I think about which one to post next. But as time goes on, after another month or two, you're going to see the most recent live stream posted here on the uploads page under the videos tab. I think the most what makes the most sense though is we start to get more content and you can actually see everything here this is everything we have on the screen right now in terms of what's been uploaded if you go to playlists however i've created a few custom playlists here for those of you that will that are interested in certain topics or certain channels within the channel where you'll be able to find things a little more easily uh, you can ignore liked videos that's something that just populates for me whatever i tend to like shows up there Mock exam webinar replays and mock exams, two separate playlists within there. And the way I've, I've broken that is, is like this. If you go to mock exam webinar replays, you'll see me giving a preamble of that particular webinar where I've talked a little bit about different things, the critical listening protocol. I'll show you what the syllabus looks like. I'll show you what the marking grid looks like. Just a basic preamble. And then at some point, when I actually bring the student in, that part is all pre-recorded, the actual exam itself. And so what I tend to do there is I st I've stopped the webinar and some of you will be watching this first one. Well, where's the exam? Where can I watch the student play? That's gonna be in a separate spot because during the webinar, I thought it would be easier for everyone participants to hear if they were logging into that mock exam separately and we all watched it together, but separately. And then we came back to the webinar and I went through a long hour long presentation on what we heard in that exam. So that's what you see there. You'll see the beginning of the webinar sometimes, but it's not going to quite finish. It's going to pause. That's when you can pause the webinar and go back to the mock exam playlist where you'll actually see that webinar or that particular mock exam for the webinar you were watching. The one we were watching, I put the date on it and the grade and everything. It was mock exam grade four classical from April 22nd. So I click on that particular one here on the right hand side in the index of the playlist. And there's where you can watch the actual exam for anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes currently. And then when you're done, you can mark you can mark along as it goes. And then when you're done, go back to the playlist you were at or the webinar you were at for the mock exam webinar. And you can pick up right where you left off and listen to my rationale for why we marked the way we did. And you'll see here, I'm just showing you on the screen what kind of comments are. I know a lot of you already have seen this. But we talk about all everything in detail here over the course of about an hour to give you a really good idea of what's inside those mock or what's inside the exam room. What did the examiner see? What did they hear? How are students prepared? What's the examiner thinking? Those are the kind of things that I talk about. And right now we have three mock exams listed. And again, you'll find the replays of the webinar and the actual mock exam on different playlists. So you can go back and forth. And each of them is indexed by date and by what exam the student's trying. Those of you that are curious about uh, contemporary idioms piano, there is a webinar here, webinar replay, contemporary idioms piano level five from May 13th. I'd highly recommend you watch that. That'll give you a really good idea through the webinar and through the actual mock exam itself of what goes on in the exam room and how students, what they have to prepare at level five. So that's the next play, the next two playlists you'll see there. I find YouTube quite saturated on the screen. It takes me a while to poke around, but you know, do poke around. And after a while of, of, of learning it and going around, you start to figure out where your eyes need to be and what you need to click on to get somewhere. But I know I've been overwhelmed for years on that. So I hear you. CC recitals and performances, there's only one there right now, and that's our convocation recital from 2021 last November. We had several students submit recordings, and you'll see them all in there playing their recordings. So that's the only thing that's there for now, but that playlist is going to be populated out in the future. Um, music by women and by pop composers. 
we've had Eleanor Gummer, Cecil DeRosier walk us through several of these webinars now. And I'm sorry, I didn't realize we've had seen here already. The first one on this playlist, there's four uploaded right now. These were the webinars that they gave last year, but this first one is actually a presentation that Cecile prepared by video for the CFMTA, Canadian Music Teachers Federation Conference back in July, 2021. And so that's a really good introduction to different composers she demonstrates at the keyboard. And then her and Eleanor together, hour and a half long webinars talking about Baroque performance practice, classical performance practice, romantic performance practice, using women or using music by women composers. And a lot of the, I think all of the music they're learning is all on our classical piano syllabus, as well as Eleanor has published it through her one eye publications. I need to hold those up today, but I've got them in my library here somewhere. So that's what those webinars are about. I'm just again going on the screen a little further. You can see often they post um, shots of the score on the screen while they are being played live. Something you can see Eleanor there in the top right playing this piece from her piano. At some of these, Cecile is playing from her harpsichord in her studio, which is really great when they're talking about Baroque and some of the classical performances. And we are gonna have them back on October 7th to continue that series. And so everything that they do together and not only just them, but we also have other people like our, one of our examiners, Sandra Mogensen, who publishes some of this music with Deborah Wanless. We're going to have them back as well. And you'll see all of those recordings of those webinars in this playlist featured, uh, featuring music by women by pop composers. Uh, video tutorials, these were created quite a while ago. And the video tutorials we have listed here are for American Popular Piano, for the improv requirement for the contemporary piano syllabus. There's two tutorials there. And I go through in quite a bit of detail over about 10 minutes on how to get students started with improv at level one. And then I give you a level two example. Over time, I'm gonna add more tutorials to that list as well. And then also keyboard harmony for our classical piano syllabus. I cover grades four and five in the first tutorial. Grade six gets a tutorial all of its own and then grades seven and eight. And I give you screenshots of what the score looks like. I show you my hands on the keyboard so you can see what students are required to do. Those that are new to Conservatory Canada, those are the sort of value added skills that you don't see anywhere else. But I break it down step by step, what's required for the improv or what's required for keyboard harmony. And again, improv goes with the contemporary idioms piano syllabus and the keyboard skills, keyboard harmony specifically, goes with the classical piano syllabus. So you'll find those all under video tutorials playlist. Again, any questions, anytime, anyone, just go ahead and fire away into the Q&A box, preferably. And then new teacher webinars, all here on its own playlist. This is really great because we have a contemporary idioms piano syllabus webinar that I gave a couple of years ago. That's an hour and 15 minutes long. Just a great overview of the whole syllabus, what each individual component entails, how the marks are allocated, all the little twists and turns and flexible options that you can use in terms of customizing that exam for students. At the bottom of this playlist, you'll see the classical piano syllabus, web syllabus webinar. It's very similar, except I'm looking at classical piano. And those two webinars currently are linked from our website, but here's a better place, I think, to see them and find them more reliable. Sometimes those website links get broken, I'm noticing. Uh, and then the other tutorials are also there. But as I do other new teacher webinars, they're going to be featured on this particular playlist. You can see each webinar underneath. I, I give a description about what you're going to see in that webinar. Each playlist also has a description underneath it. If I go to, for example, Music by Women and by Pop Composers, I can view the whole playlist. And actually, no description for that. Where's the descriptions for the actual playlist? Okay, this is a lecture demonstration somewhere. I see I need to learn a little bit more about YouTube. I know I've seen it. I need to find where the description is of the playlist. But I know someone will find that. Someone may even put it in the chat box where I'm not seeing that. <laughs> but anyway, that's playlist. I think that's the important thing. Whenever you come to a YouTube channel, you'll arrive at home. And I always find things just kind of scattered at home. It's a nice place to sort of see content. But to really get organized, if at first look at playlists, and you'll see things there all in nice orders and little folders and silos. And a lot of these videos are in two different folders or two different playlists. And then once you get caught up with all the content, what's there, and you feel okay, every Friday I want to check in on the latest webinar, maybe just go to videos because the most recent upload will always be at the top left. And that's how I like to navigate these, these channels, uh, these YouTube channels. So that's a little bit about that. Any questions about how the YouTube channel is working? You're having trouble finding it? 
All you have to do is go into YouTube and search Conservatory Canada TV. You, really, Conservatory Canada is probably all you have to put in there. And then if you hit the subscribe button, that's really useful because then you can always find it a little bit easier when you're logged into YouTube. If you're a regular on YouTube and you're, and you're checking things out, you can subscribe to the channel. You'll probably get some kind of notification when we've uploaded a new video if you're set up that way with those kind of notifications. Um, but you'll be able to find us a little bit easier whether you're on your mobile device or your desktop by looking at your subscribe your subscriptions and then you can find us quite easily that way. Okay, so that's a little bit about CCTV, how these webinars are going to be going. It appears I am simulcasting on YouTube. I'm checking on a different device here and it seems to be working pretty well. Second thing on my list is website. Uh, as of this morning, I've been working the last couple of weeks with a developer that we use from time to time to speed the thing up. And I am happy to say, look how fast this is. I click on contemporary readings voice. There it is. I click on diploma syllabus. There it is. Syllabi download. I go to the home page. There it is. So I don't know about you, but a lot of our users were noticing the thing was painfully slow at times. We've just migrated to a new server as of this morning, and it appears to be working brilliantly. So those of you who are having trouble before on certain devices, it should be working quite quickly for you now. And those that are new, I'll just talk a little bit about how the website's set up. The homepage, the latest news will always be in the middle right here. And you're going to see a couple news items pop up here in the next couple of weeks, one about the YouTube channel and then one about the database. You can find the most current updates there. We don't use this a lot, but really important updates that need to be written out. Uh, the associate piano syllabus revisions, that's all going to appear here under latest news. Um, some stuff here for new teachers. Conservatory Canada Radio, this whole panel, I'm going to change into the YouTube channel link, I believe, in the next couple of weeks. And the teacher locator, I believe right now we're having trouble with. Uh, yeah, this isn't quite working well right now, and I apologize for that. From time to time, this feature gets a little bit broken. We're going to be fixing that in the next couple of days, so you should see that repopulated. Those of you that aren't in the teacher locator, you can go ahead and click this button called Teacher Locator Instructions. It'll take you to a set of instructions on how to register yourself, set a password. I'll go in. If you have submitted, if I know you're a CC teacher because you've already submitted a student for an exam, then I'll have this approved so that you can pop up on our Google map and people can search for a CC teacher using this feature when it's working. We'll get that working again soon. The website has my full attention and hopefully we can get that fixed soon. At the top right, that brings me to the next thing, our new database. I know a lot of you are able, and, and I should mention one more thing. Thanks for your patience last week. The website was down for at least a couple of days and over the long weekend, but luckily we had a developer working on that on Labor Day and was able to get that up and running for us. I know a lot of you rely on these buttons up here in the top right, teacher portal and students rely on student portal to get to what actually is the ccexaminations.ca website. It's a separate website. It's our current database any day now. When you click on that link or even any minute, you're going to notice that this is closed. We've been warning people for a couple of weeks now that we're about to migrate our database. And so this old database you're going to find is, is not available suddenly. We need a week or 10 days to migrate all the data from this website or this database to the new database. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. So you're going to see a maintenance page here in the coming days, probably over the weekend into next week. You won't be able to access exam results. Students, unfortunately, will not be able to register for exams. They won't be able to see exam or academic reports, things like that. So bear with us for a week or so. We're going to launch with a whole new, a whole new look and database on September 19th, hopefully. I'll keep communicating to you how that's working out through the email list, on the website news, and also on Facebook. The teacher's Facebook page is probably the best place to get critical updates if you're concerned about what's happening. Why can't a student register? When can a student register for those of you who are close? Again, we tried to warn you a couple of weeks ago uh, to get that done as soon as possible. We were going to have this dark period. And right now, the dark period looks like a little later than we thought, but starting any minute now, right through to September 19th before the lights come back on. We want to make sure everything is, is, is migrated correctly. All of your old data is still going to be there. Um, all the old exam results are going to be there. Anything prior to 2007 might take another month to upload that data into a student's portal. But there's going to be, there, and there may be some growing page, uh, pains, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to keep you up to date and, and do the best we can. Uh, Natalie's asking, well, we need to create a new teacher ID number once it's relaunched. Um, what's going to happen ideally is that when the new app is launched sometime around September 19th, you'll get an active, an, an email, a notification email. And 
through that, you'll be able to get to the new, the new app. I'll show you what it's going to look like, and I'll show you some of the steps. Hopefully, it's a really simple process where you can go through. You'll be assigned a new teacher ID. You'll be asked to, to select a new password and that kind of thing. The one glitch we realized is that there are a number of email servers these days where these emails are not going to get through. If you have a Shaw email address out west, and I know my I'm in this bracket, I'm not going to get that notification email. Uh, most Yahoo uh, email addresses, these, these notifications aren't going to go through uh, at all. They won't even go to your spam folder. Some of you, you're going to end up seeing this notification go into your spam folder, um, but it doesn't matter. I think as long as you're aware and you're engaged with us here, all you have to do is go to the website when we tell you it's what's open. Go to the teacher portal, and you're going to be redirected to this page here. This is a whole different link. It'll still be on the website. We'll publish this link on the Facebook page. We'll get it up on our website. Uh, we'll send it out in emails so that if you're a teacher and you want to see what that portal looks like, this is where you're going to go. It's a nice new look. It's going to match our website a little bit more, which we're really excited about. It's more detailed. And so with that comes a whole learning curve. And so we ask you to bear with us as we learn how the new app works. And after about a year, you're going to see it's quite slick. It's, it's much more secure than the old app. And we think it's going to take us into the next decade a lot better than we would have otherwise. It's, it's powered by Microsoft Dynamics. And our ITC company in London, Ontario called Invorg has worked on this, worked on this with us for over two years now. And we're quite excited to launch this shortly. So you can see the instructions here when you get to the new link when this is finally given the green light. Um, if you're a new student or teacher, you can create an account. That's the first step and there's a button there to click. If you're an existing student teacher or examiner and this is your first time here, please activate your account using the link that was sent to your email. We realize I would estimate about half of you are not gonna get that link. It's just email is just, it's not archaic yet, but it's difficult to reach people when our email addresses are changing. There's all sorts of filters now on servers and, and a lot of these emails aren't going to get through. But as long as you get here, you can skip to step five. If you're an existing, or no, sorry, I would say you're going to, yeah, you, you'd be able to skip, I think, to step five. If you're an existing teacher or an examiner with an active account login here, or if you, no, no, sorry, step four. If you're an existing teacher or examiner and did not receive an activation link by email, please obtain your activation link here. Step four is where you're gonna go if you did not get that link by email. Students will go to step three. So families will also, all of our users are gonna get this push. Uh, a lot of them again, aren't gonna get it because we don't have current addresses for a lot of them. And so they're gonna go to step three. As long as they have an account, anyone, a teacher or a student or an examiner, has an account in our old database, you can go to step three or four. You're already in our new database. You just need to reactivate, change your password. You'll change some of your identity information as well. Some of that, your address may not look quite right in certain fields within the new database. We're gonna need you to adjust those kind of things. You can upload a bio about yourself. You can give us other information. Um, and eventually students will be able to tie themselves to you within their account. It's gonna be really critical that students, when they start registering for their next exam, that they tie yours, your, your profile to theirs so that you can still see their academic records as you did before. Um, step six, if you don't remember your student teacher examiner ID or password, you can retrieve it on step six. So all of this works quite well. I'll just give you a quick peek inside. In terms of a login, I can sign in here to what is my student portal. And this is what students would see. It's very similar to what, what teachers are going to see as well. Students can register for an exam or they can register for a digital badge right at the top. Very distinct links there. You can go to my account and under my account, this is where you're going to edit your information. There's security questions. There's additional information. Submit all that kind of stuff. It's pretty easy to follow. It's just a little bit more detailed than we were collecting before. If you're not comfortable sharing certain bits of information, don't share. My exams, a student will be able to see what exams they have coming up here or what has been done. And incomplete exam registration, sometimes students can register for an exam and they save that process and they go back and finish it later because they need more information. They would find that down below. It's much broader in some ways than, than the workflows we used to have. I can show you what digital badges look like though. I had a, I did a repertoire level five digital badge as a test and students can download. This is what a bronze level five digital badge would look like, really smart looking. I can show you, I believe what a gold digital badge looks like. 
right there. Students can download it. They can print it once they download it. They can share it on social media. We'll talk about digital badges more next week, but I know a lot of you have been curious about what that thing looks like. Um, and then this one here has been unscheduled. Here a student is registered for exam, but it hasn't been assigned yet to an examiner. or hasn't been scheduled. Students will still be able to see where that all is. So this gives you a little look about what that new database is going to look like. And a couple of questions here. Oh, Wendy's asking, what is a digital badge? Come next week, 168 hours from now, next Friday at noon, we're going to talk all about digital badges. That's Friday, September 16th. I did do a little webinar on digital badges back at the end there in May. And basically what it is, you know what, I'm going to get out of here for a moment. Piano Repertoire Digital Badge. Let's do this, actually. Let me copy the link to this document, which is public. We've been releasing this a little bit here and there. I'm going to throw this in the chat box. And if anyone's curious, you can check out this document that's on my screen. And you can actually view the syllabus for the digital badge. We're going to release this fairly shortly on the website, so you'll be able to see it. We've got a little bit of work to do. But what a digital badge is, is this. We know that most of our students nowadays cannot do and sit a, a full certificate exam, the full traditional exam. There's so many components by the time they learn four or five pieces, techniques, sight reading, ear training, keyboard skills, improv, whatever it's going to be. It's very difficult for, for most of our students to be able to participate in that kind of system. We wanted to develop something for those students to make it way more accessible for them. And so what students do in a repertoire, this is for piano only right now, repertoire only, they can register for a digital badge and all they do is they they record video record three separate pieces of music you can use the syllabus as a guideline the classical piano syllabus or the contemporary piano syllabus as a guideline we're not really firm on the levels of those things we're leaving that to teachers to decide on the free approvals if you want to get a different piece approved you can approve it yourselves you don't have to ask the office you can ask another teacher for advice on you know do you think this is appropriate for level four students pre-record three pieces they submit them through that new portal I was showing you. There'll be a URL box to paste the URL to YouTube or wherever they, whatever sharing link they have that they've uploaded that music to. The examiner goes in, has a look at the three pre-recorded pieces, makes a lot of helpful comments, tells students what they're doing well, and tries to focus the comments to give them what's the next thing they can do to improve. And they give them a gold, silver, or bronze status. A gold status indicates somewhere around 86% and higher. Silver is somewhere between 75 and 85 and bronze is below 75. Students can take those badges and do whatever they want with them. They're kind of just a neat collectible thing, purely in digital form. They can make a hard copy if they want from the digital JPEG that they get, but it's to reward those students and involve them in a short-term goal. For some students, it's still gonna be a long-term goal, but we can involve more students in the process. There are a lot of students nowadays who, who can't sit the exam for other reasons. This may appeal to them. It doesn't have to, it's not going to be a live performance. It's something that's recorded. They can work on it with you in the studio. We may have adult learners who are more self-taught and working on their own. This may appeal to them. It's something we're going to promote. We're going to we're going to try and roll this out too for vocal repertoire so that voice students can get on the action, guitar students, and then roll out other badges, like composition badges, ensemble badges. The sky is really the limit. So Digital badges, we'll talk about them more next week. I'm going to bring on the committee. We're going to have a big, large panel uh, of five teachers that were on that committee to talk about and share their thoughts about how this is going to work. Some of them have been testing it out already. I know a couple of you have tested it out with us, and we, we love the way it's working. And so that's what digital badges is all about. And I encourage you to join me next week to go over that in a lot more detail. And if you want to check out this document on my screen now, go ahead and click that link in the chat box, and that'll take you right to it. And we're going to launch this a little more far and wide shortly. Okay. Do the badges go toward a full certificate once all units in a grade have been completed? That's one of the thoughts we had. And that was the initial concept of this sort of module exam. But right now we don't have plans for that. I can't, I, I can't see a technique badge, you know, maybe, maybe in the long run it works. But the idea of doing the exam in these little units and pre-recording them. I don't think we're still, we're not going to give a certificate for that. Students can collect individual badges. Maybe at some point the individual badges lead to something. But our traditional exam certificate is still a separate entity. And these badges, are we don't want them to replace their certificates at all. We still want to see, there's still some value in students preparing that large body of work. We still want to see those students do that, those that can do it. 
what we're doing with the badges is we just want a way to you know broaden our reach and give more students the chance to participate on this kind of level and get some unbiased feedback on on how they're doing um so yeah no no plans to actually tie it into the traditional certificate the certificate of course you know at the level seven and eight in ontario and level six in other provinces um helps you get high school credits in most of those provinces still these digital badges will not we're not we're not looking to tie that into any any secondary uh secondary public education credits in any way for high school any other questions about digital badges that was on my list of things to talk about here accm uh associate of conservatory canada in music the diploma syllabus for piano we went and revised the piano requirements for grades one to ten back in 2018 a lot of you most of you i think are really happy with how that's working but when it came to the associate performer the associate teacher exam we didn't revise those yet a couple little small changes so that if you're doing the skills they match the grade 10 piano syllabus more we've taken out the transposition we've added a ton of repertoire we've tweaked the mark allocation slightly we're giving you two years to create to complete the whole exam if you're doing the partials for the associate teacher. Little things like that we have changed and we're gonna publish those on this page here for associate performer and associate teacher in the next couple of weeks. We're just finalizing the details on those. So I just wanna make you aware, I know we've had a number of questions in the last couple of weeks from students that are looking at that exam and asking how we can make it work. And just so you all know, there's gonna be some tweaks to that syllabus. If you've already started work on that syllabus and, and know a student who's preparing for it, not much is going to change. It's just going to be a few little tweaks here and there. No one's preparation is going to be wasted at this time on that when you see that roll out. Um, digital badge session next week. This is a shorter session, by the way. I'm not going to bore you with too much detail here, but I'll talk about what's upcoming. Next Friday, I've talked about the digital badge webinar we have coming up with the committee members here who are going to come and tell you what it's all about and get you excited. And hopefully you can engage all of your students in this. That was the idea that we wanted to engage more students. And then on the 23rd of September, it depends how the database launch goes, but I'm kind of leaving that date open either to talk a little bit more about the new database and give a tutorial on how it works um, and give people more information on that. Or I could always put in a mock exam there. I'm not sure what's going to happen on the 23rd, but I'm leaving that open. On September 30th, we're going to have George Litterst and CC examiner Andrew Harbridge come in and talk again about SuperScore. I think there've been there've been a lot of super score webinars, but they're going to share all the latest work they've been doing over the summer in terms of getting more information up there. And we've got a really great project where he's taken sight reading and ear training and put that into super score for CC levels one to ten, or maybe it's only one to eight. He'll let us know. But those of you that are on the iPad using the super score app or have been curious about it, I know these webinars are generally well attended. They're just going to take you a little further than they had with their last webinar in the spring and tell you what their latest is. They've created a spreadsheet with all the music from various conservatories and showing you which pieces are in super score that are on the CC exam. There are just tons. I think we're finally at the point where if a student and a teacher didn't want to purchase hard copies of music, they can have the super score app, have their iPad and have all the music they need for an exam right there. I mean, they're finally at that level. And I look forward to that webinar on September 30th with them. And then on October 7th, we're going to have Eleanor Gummer and Cecile de Rosier back, and they're going to talk about their next installment. I'm not sure exactly what the topic is, we're just refining that. The next installment of what they're going to show us in terms of women composers, the music that Eleanor has been publishing, and talking about performance practice. So I hope you join me for that. And then beyond that, I've got a whole bunch of other, uh, other things lined up, just not with specific dates yet. We're going to have... Um, I'm going to try to feature a number of different people that are doing research into piano pedagogy, talking about performance practice and ornamentation and all that kind of thing, but also teaching beginners. Um, and so there's a number of guests that I'm reaching out to now, and we're, we're going to have a timetable for that. I think eventually we'll have Deborah Wanless back as well to talk about theory. It's something she was interested in doing this spring. We just didn't have time for. So a lot of different things in the works for the webinars this year, more of a research angle overall. You're going to hear from a number of different experts showing you really, really interesting things that will help inform our teaching studios and bring us a lot of meaning. And from time to time, we'll have people coming in, showing us their softwares, showing us their music, that kind of thing. We will have Christopher Norton back, no doubt. I know those webinars are always very well attended as well. Are there any other questions about anything whatsoever? Anyone having any experiences in their teaching studios? Any difficulties, any surprises? 
feel free to throw in the chat box what your experience is or the q a if you have a specific question for me about where we're heading at conservatory canada if anything didn't make sense that i was telling you today not seeing anything yet but i thank a large number of you for joining me here live today this is really great to see this this large list of people here live it's great to connect and in, i should mention too in terms of connecting the conservatory canada contemporary idioms piano teachers group that was meeting last year we're going to resume those meetings i believe it's on the 29th of september i put that information in the last email that went out yeah that'll be september 29th all of those meetings are at noon eastern so everyone on both coasts can join throughout the different time zones we have in canada we're up to about a dozen teachers joining regularly every three weeks or so whenever that group meets i'm not sure yet if that one's going to be simulcast on youtube or record or not i'm going to talk to others and see what they think about it but that's when that group renews its interest in contemporary items piano syllabus and i think anyone that's interested in that syllabus with their students you know you, you would glean a lot to come and join uh anyway nice to see you all here i, th I don't see any questions or comments so i'm always under the impression that i'm covering things well watch for a lot more coming up digital badges next week that syllabus will be launched soon the accm revisions launch soon the big thing with our database Enjoy the fast website, poke around on the YouTube channel, see what you can find, watch for more content. I'm going to upload a few more webinars in the, in the coming week here from last year. If you had a webinar from last year that you like that you want to see up there, upload, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, the Contemporary Idioms Teacher Group, that does have a separate link. It's, it's just a Zoom meeting so we can all see each other. I know in this webinar format, if all the participants are hidden more or less, it's a different format. But that one we do on Zoom meeting, and that link is sent out in the emails and also on the Facebook page. So if you check your email where you registered for this webinar, if you did do that through an email, um, take a look there and you'll see the link. That link's going to stay the same all year long for whenever that group meets. And as that group meets, I put that in the email so you'll know when it is, and I'll also hit this teacher's Facebook page. Conservatory Canada Teachers Facebook. If you're not in that group and you want to belong, go ahead and ask to belong there and I'll let you in and you can see everything that works. Thanks for the thanks. Those of you that are sending me thanks and wishes, good wishes. And we'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your teaching next week. Great to connect with you. And I look forward to more at the CCTV webinars every Friday, noon Eastern. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.